So I had a, a, a viewer ask me about comparing real world pictures on my plasma compared to LCD. So here we are. So as you can see, the plasma TV, depending on the screen content, the, the current or the wattage it draws will vary. As you can see, most of the time it's going to probably be hovering around 400 watts. This is for a 50 inch 1080p Samsung Plasma. Which is playing regular content. Yes, there's a fair bit of blue sky here, but it's not, you know, it's not like we're, we're not like we are displaying a completely full, bright, um, white background. We've got varying screen content, and as you can see, The power consumption varies depending on screen content. So I figured I would show this off. If I really want to show what this thing can do, if I stop this video from playing and I move over to say color bars, here's NTSC color bars, 440 watts is what this one's drawing. Whoops, 440 watts, and that'll be pretty much constant because the, the, this is full screen color bars. If I were to move over to say let's get uh, let's get a white screen on here stair step stair step 420 here we go the good old Indian head test pattern This one's drawing, got my screen size changed there. This one's drawing 458 watts, and that's pretty much the maximum this set's gonna draw, about 460 watts maximum. Back to my color bars again, 440 watts. Put up a full white screen here. This is a completely white screen, not quite filling the entire screen. There's a bit of a crop on either side, but uh, this is a full white screen. And as you can see, 450 watts approximately. I'm just changing test patterns here, looking for anything that uh, we might be able to draw more power from. Yeah, that's about the maximum, 458 watts is about all I'm able to draw off of this set here. So now that we've seen this set, I'm going to uh, switch to the the older 42 inch standard definition plasma. Now the other one doesn't all have an HDMI input so I won't be able to put test patterns on it so I'll just be running video on it but uh, we'll see how it compares and then I'll compare it to my 32 inch CCFL um, LCD set and we'll compare it to a couple of other plasmas that I have another 50 inch another 42 inch a newer one uh, even try a 63 inch 1080p which should that should draw the most amount of power of all of them but we'll try those and just get a comparison now as you can see the, the plasma in behind is now just playing and it is drawing on average about 220 230 watts on average on what it's playing right now and again the power that it draws is going to vary depending on the screen content but as you can see it's averaging around 220 watts now this is for a 10 year old 40 inch plasma I think if I probably were to put up a white screen on here it would probably be around 350 watts but again I, I can't put uh, my test pattern generator on the set because it's too old, it doesn't have uh, any uh, HDMI inputs. This set has RGB and it has a DVI, but no HDMI. So I can't put my test pattern generator on my phone onto this set. But we're able to see in, in real world, this is what it draws on average around 220 watts. Now let's move over to the 32 inch LCD. My LCD, as we can see right now, when it's turned off, it draws 4 watts. As soon as I turn this one on, hundred and fifty-six. 
and being a uh, CCFL backlight, this set's going to draw 155 watts, 156 watts, always when it's on. We'll put some screen content on there so you see that you can see that it does not change. As you can see, it doesn't matter whether I've got a black screen or a white screen, the power consumption of an LCD TV remains the same. 155 watts for this 32 inch. Now if you've got a larger one, it's obviously going to draw more power. Most of the 46 inch TVs I've seen draw about 225 watts. Next we'll look at, this is an LG 720p plasma and it is in maximum energy saving mode displaying the full white test pattern and as you can see if we look at the power meter this one is drawing 157 watts which puts this set right on par with the LCD TV that we just looked at power consumption wise it is pretty much the same let's put some uh, video on here even on the the color bars if you look on here the color bars are only drawing 141 watts let's put some video content on here we'll play the video that I played before you just play it at full screen there we go and we'll just move ahead a bit into the video a bit here okay looking at roughly the same scenes that we were looking at on the other TV you can see that this TV is only drawing about 155 watts average now I remember I did say that this one is in maximum power savings mode if I go into the menu on this set I can actually turn that off so let's do just that let's go into the menu and I'm going to go into I think it's under picture settings on here no it is set for vivid but I think there's a um, control here for no I did have it in vivid so that's actually going to draw the most amount of power I thought oh yeah here's power saving here we go power saving mode is for so let's turn the power saving completely off and see what type of power this thing will draw now that I've cranked it up this is to the maximum okay so now our average is gone up to about 203 watts 190 some odd watts let's put up the full white screen now this picture is actually brighter than you would ever want to watch it I mean this is super bright this screen but let's put up let's put up the full white um, screen here and we'll see how this one looks so now we've been able to get our power consumption up to about 250 248 watts so we're drawing a little bit more power now on this one because I've turned off the energy savings again this is a 42 inch LG it's a plasma with the power saving feature turned off if I go back in and I turn on the power saving uh, feature here you'll see the four steps so there's no power savings the first step drops it to 247 221 183 and maximum savings 158 and that picture quality there actually in the in the set number four uh, maximum power savings that actually is a very acceptable picture that is usually where I do watch this set just because I find that if I have it set to any of the other settings it's actually too bright and I guess if you're in a really bright room you would want to use some of the other settings but in in my uh, studio environment here which is more of a, a better setting for watching TV this is uh, the setting I usually leave the set in because it gives me the most pleasing picture and it's not overpowering the room and it's also giving me the best energy savings 161 watts on full white screen let's move to another set and we'll examine the power that it consumes so I'm now going to look at the power consumption of my this is a 63 inch Samsung it's a full 1080 this is in my media room I'm going to put the white pattern on first and we'll take a look I can't show the uh, the power meter in the same shot because it's on the other side it's the wires are all in through the wall so I have it plugged in down at the uh, at the power receptacle and we'll get a shot of that and we'll see how much power this one draws 
So with the full uh, white screen on here, this television is drawing about 475 watts, 470 in that range with the full white screen. So let's get some video on here now to see how this one performs in average. Again, our power consumption is going to vary. As you can see with the screen content, the power consumption does change, but this the sucker does draw a fair bit of power. Now this one here is not in any power saving mode. Uh, this is cranked up, I believe. Well, it might not be cranked up all the way, but it's it's cranked up. Let's just see what we can do with the power settings on this set. Okay, I was mistaken. It was cranked up to full. So now with power saving mode turned on on this set, the power drops down to about 242 watts. And uh, that's, that will, of course, vary depending on the actual screen brightness. So as you have a bright screen, it's going to obviously draw a bit more power. But as you can see, there's a substantial power savings by just turning down what they call the cell light from maximum down to, to a lower setting. This one down now as low as it goes. Picture looks great. It'd be great for a darker room, but in a brighter room, people wouldn't find the uh, brightness would be good enough. But as you can see, there's a big, there's a big difference in the power. Let's put up the full white screen in power save mode. Okay, I've got the monoscope test pattern back up again. As you can see, the power consumption is only 359 watts. If I go into my settings and turn up the, what they call the cell light, you'll see as I increase it to maximum, it really sucks back the power on these these TVs. And this is an energy efficient. This is this is an Energy Star set, but because it is a 63 inch set. It, it uh, does have a tendency to draw a lot of power because uh, on plasma each pixel is essentially a small light bulb so the more light that it, each pixel is going to put out the more power it's going to draw. So now I'm going to measure a couple of my more energy efficient sets that I have access here to. I've got a, a DLP TV that uses a conventional light bulb on it so it's going to draw a constant power like uh, an LCD set and I have an LED backlit DLP set which should be the most energy efficient of them all. So I'll show you those ones next. So this is an old Samsung uh, 56 inch DLP set. I've just got the uh, kids play their Xbox on it. This uses the 100 watt mercury lamp as its light source. I expected this thing would not be that energy efficient but I was quite surprised. Check this out. This set only draws 152 watts. So that's got this to be one of the more energy efficient TVs I've got. It's right on par with that 32 inch LCD set. Let's take a look at what the Xbox 360 draws by comparison. Okay, just plugged in and turned on, not playing any games. The uh, Xbox draws about 75 watts. So actually, I, I thought it was going to be more than that. But I'm sure that once um, heavy gameplay gets taking place on this, and the graphics really get going and the processor gets going, it's going to go up a lot more. But just sitting idle and not doing anything other than being turned on, it draws about 75 watts. Okay, this set is a Samsung. It's a 61 inch. It's an LED laser diode DLP set. So it uses three, what they call flat lights. They're three high intensity LEDs that are shone in sequence or sequence between red, green, and blue to produce all the colors through the DLP chip. This TV, the DLP chip is actually going bad and I'll show you guys that in a second here. What happens to these DLP chips, you don't see it on a white screen because when the pixels fail they go white. But here's the uh, power meter. As you can see this TV draws 138 watts which makes this one the power champion of all the TVs that I own. This television draws less power even than my 32 inch LCD set. Now like a plasma, the LED DLP sets are dynamic. They can vary the brightness of the, the, uh, the LED panels or LED chips that generate the light for the DLP. They can be varied depending on the screen brightness. In this case, I've just got a black screen up and as you can see, the power consumption is down at 110 watts. As you can see with the uh, signal cable unplugged, you can see the dots on the screen. I'm just going to put up a black screen for a second here. And because the intensity will change depending on the screen content, if I put something up that's got a high, high signal level, you'll see them really bright for a second, like for example, a regular TV picture when there's black information on the screen. So I'm just going to change my source here.
and you should see the pixels there. You can see the white dots on the screen. So it's going to bring the TV up into test pattern mode. So how you bring a Samsung TV up in test pattern mode is with the original remote, you enter mute 182 followed by the power. And that gets you into test mode where you can uh, run through options and check things out. So I'm going to bring up some test patterns here which will make the uh, make the the bad D, uh, the bad DMD chip uh, very obvious. Now as you can see this TV does not have that many hours. This TV only has 4510 hours on it. So not a lot of hours on this television from the time it was new and the DMD panel is failing. So I mean uh, yeah, these, these DLP chips have not lasted nearly as long as uh, we would have liked them to have lasted. So I'm just going to bring up test patterns here. You should be able to see the little white dots in the red. they will be more apparent when I bring up a, uh, you can see a black dot over here. This is a black a pixel that's stuck. There it is there. So that's a pixel that's stuck black. If I go to some of the other uh, screens, the darker screens here, you'll see the uh, pixels that are stuck white as I cycle through them. Now you can start to see the white pixels here that are staying on the screen all the time. And that's the fault with the DLP chip itself. The only way to clear that is to replace the chip. So as I cycle through the different test patterns, you're able to see the white dots that stay on there all the time. It started out as a single white pixel like that and over the course of the last month or so I've got a whole crown of them over here. Right? Every time we turn on this TV it seems that there are more uh, dots, white dots appearing on the screen. It's a, a well-known issue with the LP TVs and uh, unfortunately the cost of the chip is quite expensive to repair this fault.